I want to show you a picture of a 23-year-old American Israeli, Hirsch Goldberg, Poland. He is believed to be a hostage right now in Gaza. Last Monday, I did a live interview with his mom, Rachel, uh, and uh, his dad, John. They told me that Hirsch's arm had been partially blown off by Hamas gunmen who tossed grenades into the shelter that he was hiding in after he escaped from the Novo Music Festival. Eyewitnesses had told them that, that their son Hirsch was put into a truck by gunmen and driven off, but they had no video of their son. So during that live interview a week ago, when we showed a picture of Hirsch, this picture, I realized I actually had seen their son and had a video of their son on my phone. It had been shown to me by a soldier uh, at the music festival. We recorded it off his phone. We had permission from him to do so, and it had never been released publicly. I did not want to shock them during this live interview, so I waited till the interview was done, and then I called Rachel and John immediately, and I sent them the video, and it was their son, Hirsch. I've been in touch with the family a lot this last week, and they now would like everyone to see this video. They want you to know what has happened to their child, and they want the world to know that there are seriously wounded people who were taken by Hamas. And this video is proof of that. We blurred out some parts of it, but we want to warn you it is disturbing. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! God is great, the gunman shouts, recording on his phone. He checks a car, looking for anyone else hiding. <laughs> Other gunmen shout as they bring survivors from the shelter. Come, come, they yell. Load them. That's Hirsch on the right with another hostage. His left hand and part of his arm is blown off. The bone sticks out. The other hostage appears wounded as well. Another wounded hostage is dragged by his hair and tossed into the truck. <laughs> a fourth man is thrown on top of them. When I sent the video to you, what was your initial... First of all, it's, it's, it's a crazy sequence of events that we talk to you through a computer screen and then get a phone call from you saying, I have a video of your son. I, I didn't want to say on live television. Which we so appreciated. Of course. The way everything has unfolded, the gentleness that you used, because at the end of the day, you're a journalist, and journalists want a story. And that could have been dealt with in many other ways that were not kind and gentle. So first, seeing that video in general gave us a dose of optimism. And as horrible as it is as a parent to see your kid under gunpoint being pushed, with one arm, the composure with which he's walking on his own legs, pulling himself with his one weak hand, he's a lefty and his left arm was blown off, pulling himself with his one weak hand onto the truck gave me a real dose of, of strength that he's handling a horrible situation and he's doing it with composure. I mean, we're saying he walked out calmly, which he did, but I think it was from shock. They have this photo taken inside the shelter before Hamas gunmen began throwing grenades inside. Rachel says as many as 29 people were crammed together. That's Hirsch, and this is his friend, Honor Shapira. So Hirsch and Honor went to the festival together. They've known each other since they were kids. Honor was by the door, and Honor, by everyone's account who we spoke to, um, as they were throwing in grenades, he would keep picking them up and throwing them out, picking them up and throwing them out. All these witnesses said there were 11 grenades thrown in. He threw out eight. Rachel says eight people survived and avoided capture by hiding under the blown up bodies of the dead. But Honor Shapira didn't make it out alive. His parents, they just um, came to our house on Friday and um, the uh, people who are ident identifying bodies actually let them know that they identified him with DNA, but in his hand he was holding a grenade. His dead body had a grenade in it, uh, in his hand. That's I mean, incredible. He, he's the real we, hero. Those eight people, and even the people who walked out and are now in Gaza, it's because of honor. How are you able to get through each day? I personally feel like we have to keep running to the end of the earth to save him. And we have to try to go 
believing that somehow he got treatment and he's there and he's in pain and he's suffering but he's alive and he's there and there are also the moments in this universe that we now live where you say maybe he died on the truck maybe he bled out in that truck maybe he died yesterday maybe he died five minutes ago and there are those moments where you think how are these thoughts even I don't understand these thoughts that but they're real thoughts they often go down to see their son's room this is Hersh's room this is Hersh's room this is also our um, it's a steel door because it's our um, safe room. bomb shelter uh -huh. yeah you can feel him here close his globe his books and mementos it's all just as he left them Rachel did make his bed however she wants it ready for when he returns we have a porch that's facing south and I went out Friday night and I was like screaming to him mm. you know, hoping because mm. Friday night you know we bless our children traditionally in Jewish homes you bless your children on Friday night so I was screaming the, it's a traditional blessing mm. from uh, the Bible and so I was screaming the blessing to him with my hands up I usually put my hands on his head when he's home so mm. what does the blessing say it says um May God bless you and keep you. May, God sh may God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God's countenance, countenance be lift up to, lifted up towards you and give you peace. So, What do you want people to know about Hirsch? He's just a super curious kid, and this wonderlust that he developed when he was you know, six or seven years old has been his life you know, obsession always asking for maps and globes and atlases for his bar mitzvah. Really, you know, these last few years, he's saved every penny to go on this trip that he has a ticket for on December 27th. He was going to go to India and then all points east. Rachel and John were just on the cover of Time magazine. They're trying to get the world to pay attention to the plight of the hostages, particularly those like Hirsch who have serious wounds or medical issues. As American Israelis, we've been embraced by the U.S. government. The support is there. The empathy is there from the U.S. We're obviously hungering for more than that. We want action. We want results. There are hostages from somewhere around 30 countries. Why have we not yet seen prime ministers, foreign ministers, global leaders screaming to get the wounded help? Rachel also got to be on a call with other American families and President Biden. And he stayed for 90 minutes, and he listened to us, and he cried with us. I know loss. I've lost two children. I lost my wife. And I'm telling you that you need to go through this, but you also need to remember that you will be strong again for your family. You know, and he, he said things that because he knows loss, so it wasn't platitudes. It was someone speaking who had who has lost children, speaking to a mother who lost her two children. Um, and it was, it was a real moment of coming together just as people who know what pain is. You know, this very excruciating part of pain. This is a particular kind of pain. Correct. There's no playbook for this that we know of of the game daily, is he alive? Is he getting treatment? Did he die 15 days ago? Like, we're on the head of a pin, and every direction you fall is a bad direction. So a lot of how we get through the day, when you asked that before, is we're trying to balance on the head of the pin and just get everything done with the hope that he'll come home to us alive, and he'll go on that trip with one hand. John and Rachel. With me now is Avi Mayer, editor-in-chief of the Jerusalem Post. Um, I mean, the, the situation with hostages is so sickening and horrific. Um, do you hear, I mean, when you talk to people here, is that what people are talk about first? What, what, are, what do you hear from people? Well, I think Israelis are in a state of shock, in a state of trauma, um, and they're also, uh, 
in this sort of waiting game, not knowing whether this ground offensive is going to happen or not. You know, there are 360,000 people who are massed on the border, and that affects families across the country. We're talking about people, siblings, spouses, um, uh, parents in some cases. And so I think that's what people are mostly thinking about. But of course, the hostage situation is very much on people's minds. Um, and that's been very much the conversation in Israel at this time. Hamas could release all their hostages right away. I mean, the, the game that they're playing of releasing two by two, um, it's very clear there's a, a tactic there, there's a strategy there, mm -hmm. uh, the manipulation of it. Um, it. It is incredible to me, though, that, you know, wounded hostages, infants, toddlers, people with severe medical conditions are still being held. It, it's... It's shocking. I mean, there's no words to describe anything we've encountered over the past two weeks. I don't know that the English language has the the, the, the vocabulary to enable us to describe what we're all going through, but the, the horror of having small infants, elderly people, people with disabilities or chronic illnesses who are still being held by Hamas as hostages and are not being released is is unfathomable.